In my previous video, I talked about the interaction between ships that occurs, especially in narrow channels or in the situations of overtaking and head-on encounters. In today's video, I'll be talking about the interaction between the ship and the tugs in the topic of ship handling. This is a short video, but before I proceed with the text of the video, I want you to have a careful look at the drawing here and uh, where the bigger vessel is the ship here and the smaller vessel is the tug and I have shown you the movement of the tug in five stages. Below I will describe each of these stages and how the tug should pick up a line from the vessel safely and without collidering into one another. When a tug is maneuvering to overtake the vessel to take a line from the bow, there are enormous side forces acting on the tug as she overtakes. This is shown in the diagram above. Because of the vessel's movement, there is a water that starts to pile up ahead of the vessel because of which there is a high pressure zone denoted by the red colored crosses. Similarly, a low pressure zone develops along the ship's side because of the fast flow of water alongside it. The water doesn't accumulate along the ship's sides because of which there is a low pressure which is denoted by the green minuses. So this is a low pressure zone and this is a high pressure zone. So for each of the vessel, the high pressure zone is denoted by the red crosses and the low pressure zone is denoted by the green minuses. What a ship encounters in terms of high pressure and low pressure, similar pressure zones are encountered by the tug as well, as you can see in the diagram. In position 1, the bow is sucked in towards the vessel due to the venturi effect. So we talk about the bow of the tug here. And hence the need to give hard starboard to maintain the heading of the tug is required. The tug will also accelerate automatically. In position 2, the rudder needs to be maintained hard starboard to avoid any kind of suction effect. Have a look at position 3, 4 and 5 before I go with the text as well. So in position 3, the helm needs to be reversed. Therefore, the high pressure of the ship tends to repel the bow of the tug due to the bank cushioning effect other bow cushioning effect. In position 4, the helm needs to be maintained to hard port to maintain the tug's position close to the ship. Finally, in position 5, the tug may suddenly find herself out of the high pressure zone and as the rudder is hard port, she may suddenly shear away in the direct path of the vessel. A collision may occur capsizing the tug and possible loss of life. Therefore, the speed of the vessel needs to be reduced sufficiently for the tug to come forward to take the line. So this video was a short video on how a ship and a tug should maneuver with one another so that the tug can safely obtain the line from the bow of the vessel without colliding into it. It is essential that the ship maintains its minimum speed at which it can be steered. During such instances normally the pilot is on board and a communication between the pilot and the tugboat continuously occurs for safe navigation. However, it is the duty of the officers on the bridge to monitor the situation and adjust accordingly to keep or maintain the safe navigation between the ship and the tug. I will see you soon with my next video guys. I hope you like this video. Study hard 